listen up. It's the number one voice of the Tri-State. I'm number one. It, it, it's it's clicking up 215. So let the show begin. Here we you already know who it is. It's your boy Smooth, and this is Cooking Up 215, where we get you up close and personal with your favorite artists, entrepreneurs, shakers, and move makers. And boy, do we got a major move maker in the house today. We got Delaware's own Jay Lottie in the building. Woo! What's up, Ms. Jay Lottie? Hey, y'all. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going it, on? It, it's well deserved. You're on fire right now. Thank you. I try. I try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you're working for real, for real. Mm -hmm. And it's like, for a lot of people, I feel like they're going to be like, where, where she came from, or where she come from, like you just bust on the scene. Yeah. But lo and behold, you've been doing music like then in your whole life a little bit. Low key, yeah. I mean, I always, like, I grew up in the church singing and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you was in the choir, right? Hell yeah. yeah. And then um, middle school, I used to be writing raps for people. So I don't know, like, I always been doing music, but I didn't really start taking it serious until like the past couple years. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you like the real definition of like rap snacks. What is that? What's like, rap snacks? You was giving out raps and taking people's snacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> bullshit. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. They go ahead to put you on a bag now. You know what I'm saying? Think I would love that shit. If that would happen one day, that would be fire. Yeah, I like the Y'all got to get the, the J. Lonnie rap snacks now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting on that. That's crazy, though. That would be tough. So your bars was nice like that, where people was giving you some snacks for them raps. Yeah, like, I used to be, okay, so I would, like, at the lunch table, it would be all my friends and shit, so I would just basically write raps about my friends. Mm. and shit like that like there was this one girl taylor i was just talking about this yesterday this one girl taylor she had a fat ass butt so mm. i just made a song about her fat ass butt and they would make you know like the pencils when they used to like shake the pencils on the table and yeah, shit like make that the beat, yeah. yeah and then it would just be, a thing. be the shit. yeah and everybody be like oh my god yeah. and i'm a little ass girl so you know everybody used to hype me up and shit like that that's it funny. was funny so taylor she, she brown skin <laughs> she like dominican kind of uh. I know Dominican a Taylor Dominican. from Delaware, too. Really? Yeah, I do. Shit, we might know the same one. She thick. Thicky on Taylor. Well, she ain't Dominican, this. though. She a little, she a little brown skin. Mm. That's what I was going to say, too, because it's something about y'all Delaware girls. I ain't going to hold you. Yeah, people Delaware. be sleeping on us. Nah, I don't know why y'all sleeping, fellas. We got a couple bangers. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a couple run-ins with some, some Delawareans. Yeah. And they was tight like that. Nah, I, I gotta say, we got a couple baddies in Delaware. Don't yeah. sleep on us. And y'all be like, y'all be good, good y'all like good energy, good vibes. Like, y'all yeah. ain't get ruined by the Philly public school system. <laughs> so, like, y'all be cool. Like, I feel like the girls out here, they get they get done over in the Philly public school system. And then they just be rough around the edges. But, you think so? Yeah. Like, the Delaware girls, they be, like, sweet, pretty, about their money. Yeah. A, you know what I mean? We still stand on business though. We ain't that sweet. I mean, we sweet, but shit. yeah, no. But y'all, y'all be about y'all business for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's the crazy part. So you you grew up in a in a church. You you know you was in a choir, mm -hmm. and your, your dad didn't even like the fact that you was rapping. Nah, he didn't. That's crazy. Not at all. I don't know because like in my household we didn't really grow up listening to rap like that. It was all like Spanish music, like right. salsa bachata. And, um, Sasa Bachata? Yeah, mm. all that. And when I was a baby, like, we used to live in the hood. So, but when I was, like, one or two, like, he kind of moved us outside of the city. So I guess he was, like, they was trying to protect me from certain things. Right. But it's, like, I don't know. I just always had a thing for rap, hip-hop. Like, I just liked the beat. I liked the way it made me feel when I listened to it. I was always good at it. Like, I could hear a song and play it, like, two, three times and just memorize it. Like, that's all I mm. used to do. Like, I used to go on YouTube on my little Acer laptop yeah. and just memorize raps all day. Like, I just loved it. So, mm. And it's know. something about that thing that people tell you you can't have that you just want more now. Maybe so, yeah. The one thing they tell you not to do now, you really want to do it. Yeah. And plus, like, I would always go to the city and, like, visit my cousins and stuff. And that's all they used to play, too. So, I don't know. I kind of just fell in love with the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. So, you used to like Nicki and, uh, and Wayne. Like, do you yeah, feel like Nicki influenced your style a little bit? I mean... Not her particularly, but she was definitely one of the people that I listened to a lot growing up. Mm -hmm. But I think my style is like kind of all over the place. Like I know that I've only dropped a certain amount of songs, mm -hmm. so it's hard to really like feel like the whole big picture of like how my music is. But it's extremely versatile. Like yeah, it's just 
It is though. Yeah. I would say right now it seems like they try to push you. I don't even want to say they try to push you because I don't know behind the scenes like how you felt about certain records. Mm -hmm. But let's say like Black and Mild. But yeah. I know Private Island is your favorite and it's way more yeah. fire. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like that's probably more of what you like. Yeah. You like the Private Island type music. You you want to really sing. I want to Put a sing. little lovey dovey, mix it with a little raunchy in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A little For sexiness. Yeah. I feel like that that's that's probably where you really want to go. Yeah, I think I do too. I feel like I also record a lot more singing songs. Mm -hmm. Like I was just going over my catalog with my manager a couple of days ago, and he was trying to like we were just trying to organize it and see what we have, and it was like. 75%, 80% like singing songs and then yeah. the rest being like rap or a mix of both. So I feel like that's definitely where my heart is at now. I and started off rapping, but it kind of just turned into a whole different thing. And I recently started taking taking vocal lessons too. Oh, just you really to trying like, to go up on them? Yeah, because I want to do it the right way. Like if I'm going to do it, I'm going to stand on it that's and it's going to be professional. As it's going to be perfect. As so. you should. You got to really take it serious. You yeah. know what I mean? Too many people be playing with it, and it's like, this shit for real, for real. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you cannot play with it. Yeah, if you love it, why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you even got like a song like Invite Only, like mm. the singer. Like, I like that, you know? Like, I, I like that sound from you. But I, I do guess too. I'm, I'm also like a little softy too. Like, I ain't with all the rapping yeah. all the time. But I definitely think like that's your pocket. I think so too. So, I what, agree. what do the people feel? I mean, shit, anytime I've ever posted, like, a snippet of my melodic songs, um, people respond well. Like, they're excited to hear it. They want to hear that sound. Some other people are like, nah, like, we fell in love with Topic. Give us the rap Topic. Mm. Like, them type of songs. But at the end of the day, like, I'm going to do, like, I'm going to always, like, listen to what people think, mm -hmm. but not too much. I'm going to do what my heart tells me to do. And I think this project is really going to be... Just what it is, like my melodic sound, yeah. my rap sound a little bit, but... You're going to trust your instinct. Yeah, though. I'm going to just trust my instinct. I'm just going to block everything out Facts. and go with my gut. Because a lot of time, like, I spent a lot of time going against my gut, mm -hmm. and it ended me in places that I didn't really feel like served me. So moving forward, I think this chapter of my life is just about trusting my intuition and just going about it like that. Facts, facts. Yeah. That's the best thing. I feel like it... You got to go through it, though, because a lot of you meet people and they always try to act like they know a little bit more than you. They, yeah, I'm telling you, this is it and this is that, da, da, da. Yeah. And then as soon as you, you're doing what they doing and you're not really getting the results you want. But then when you do it your way, yeah. now it's like, yeah, nah, I said I knew this shit would work. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? That's like, yeah. from now on, I'm listening to me and me only type shit. They get like that. But it's like you got to get them the shot because I feel like when you don't give people that shot, then it's like they always feel like, you don't even try to listen. Yeah. You want me to listen so I can fuck up, and then I got to go backwards <laughs> a little bit to go forward. And granted, like, it's always good to take advice and suggestions from people, like the greats and people that, you know, are on a higher level than you. That's what you're supposed to do, Le like, learn from your peers. But at the end of the day, what might have worked for someone else might not work for you. Like, everybody got their own journey, and you kind of just have to figure out what feels good for you. That's a fact. Pretty much. And it's a long journey, you know what I'm saying? So you get to try shit, figure it out. As you go, you're going to learn. You might even pick up some little shit that you mm -hmm. like, add it to the other shit that you plan to do. Bang, then you got a whole little mixture, you know what I'm saying? Then you're rolling. So you made your first song when you was like 16 or 17? Yeah. Like your first recorded track? I think 17. 17? Six, yeah, I would say 17 to be safe, yeah. What did that sound like? Okay, so I can't really remember. It's between these two songs. I don't know which one was first, mm -hmm. but you know, um, Sweetie. Yeah, Icy Joint, right? Yeah, she had Icy Wifey. I made a remix to that, and then I don't know if that was the first one or if it was the No Limit by G Herbo remix. Oh, you so, did a No Limit G Herbo yeah, remix. Yeah, I was on some gangster <laughs> shit. That's crazy. Yeah, I low key read that job, but. I don't know. I lost my old phones, so all my old files, I don't even got them. I'd be wishing that I could go back and, Damn. like, see the growth. But all my notes got deleted. It was just a mess. But Did a Drake joint off the Blackberry with the side scroll. Type shit. It was a mess, but, yeah. And it's like, you really do got bars. Yeah. Like, you Low really key. got bars, though, for real. For, like, if you listen to the shit you be saying, like, you, 
You got a nice little play on words, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You do your thing. Thank you. Like, have you ever gotten any comments where people like, those not her bars, she not writing her raps, like, All do you get time. that type of shit? Yeah. I mean, like, when I dropped Topic, they was like, yeah, whoever wrote this drawing, like, really snapped. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you, me. Like, I wrote this shit. And then it's like, I could never win. Like, if if they're saying I don't write it, they're saying the shit completely ass. Like, nobody will ever give me my flowers ever, but I don't really give a damn. Like, they go say what they want to say. I know that I've wrote, written pretty much all my songs. The only song ever that somebody helped me with was Invite Only. That's mm. the only song out of... 200 songs that I've written that somebody actually sat down and like helped me and I still wrote the whole thing They was just really helping me with certain different melodies and I okay. feel like that's okay Like as an artist in the industry Nobody's writing their whole shit completely like Thanks. this is 2024 and I'm also not a street hood rapper like yeah. I'm totally down to work with people that want to come in and help me develop my sound if that's right. what it is, but so far, like I, it's really been all me. Like yeah. I gotta say it. I gotta give me my, my credit you, there. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Pat yourself on the back, I type John. Yes. There we go. Give yourself your flowers. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that it's true, and it's like all the people who they deem as greats. Yeah. All of them got writers. Like every single they one of do. them. They do. It is what it is. Yeah. So it's like you can't even run around screaming, "Hey, oh, he's the great. He's the great." And talk about his music and then not accept when other people want to use writers. I feel like you got to choose what it is. It's like if it's we worried about the art as a whole, then that's what it is. Then whoever helped assist with that just helped assist with that. But yeah. it's about making the art as great as we can make the art. Definitely. You know what I mean? It's like now if we want to say like a rapper, like you said, being a street rapper, I feel like that's different. Because yeah. you, you're claiming to have this pen game. You're claiming it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, literally, it's like an unsigned contract that you're telling people you write mm -hmm. all your raps, you this dope, and all that type shit. But that's really only for this category. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Like, Once the melodies and shit kick in and the crazy hooks, somebody getting some help. You know what I mean? A little assistance. Yeah. Ain't nothing. Yeah, ain't nothing. And I feel like that's, that just make that shit go up. But that's where you end up with that that great, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With a little bit of guidance. Just turn it all the way up. So, um, it's not no secret. Like, you used to dance at mm -hmm. some point and everything like that. And being, you know, your background, like we said, you're from a church background. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, how you end up in that situation? Child, uh... It's kind of, it's not really a long story. When I was about 18 or 19, mm -hmm. it was, my parents were kind of like letting me know that it was time for me to you leave know, the nest, leave the nest and figure it out because I was always, um, my own person, very independent. And I mm -hmm. like things the way that I like things. I don't really like to, like, I've always been my own boss, very bossy. So they're like, all right, you want to live your life a certain way, then mm -hmm. you going to do it out of our household. So Thanks. I kind of did that. I moved to Miami, um, became a bottle girl. I was waitressing, just hustling, anything that I could really do to make it shake. And then when I went to LA, uh, my home girl, one of my best friends out there, who I used to do bottle service with, she started dancing before me. And then she kind of just put me onto it. She was like, girl, like, it's not even really like what you think. Mm -hmm. um, you don't gotta get naked. You don't gotta do what, like, you know, fuck, nobody like right. it's really just easy money so i just started doing it and it worked out for me like i was pretty good at it because people might think like being a dancer is all about being on a pole but it's really about your ability like to talk yeah. like you got to be able to talk you got to have flow you got to finesse so yeah. a lot of the times when i was dancing i wouldn't even be dancing i'd be in the back like just chopping it up mm. with a trick just like yeah. telling them about my life like cracking jokes and I think that's where I was at with it and then when I moved to Philly mm -hmm. you know I was dancing out here for a little bit too okay but yeah I don't know it was cool for me I can't ever shit on my experience like I'm not saying like I'm not recommending it to nobody watching it like if you out there don't you know do what work for you yeah just do what work for you it worked for me right right shit. right I mean that's the thing I I, I always just like, I've always said this. There's always, like, dancers who's getting, like, a bad rep. Like, you know, it's a bad stigma that come with it. I'm like, all the dancers I know is hustlers. 
mm-hmm. and they don't play. They're not just giving it out. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, but they, some strippers are, though. Like, some bitches I know be total, totally whored out. They yeah. be in the back. Getting it it depends, yeah. It yeah. just depends the, the on you. The circumstances of who you is yeah. type shit. But most of the ones I know, they be they be stand up people that really be about their business. It's like, you know, you a hustler. You got to go get it. You figure the way to go get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Using what you got. So I always look at it. It's a double-edged sword. But I always say definitely you can't put that stigma on everybody. Like yeah. You cannot put them in no box. Like I'm like, you'll be surprised. And also, like, I knew from a little girl that I never wanted to live a regular life. Mm. I never wanted to be a normal person. I don't want a three bedroom house and a Toyota Camry. Like that's just not gonna be my life. And at the end of the day, if you know what you want for yourself, you gotta take certain risks. Like you gotta be uncomfortable and you gotta make certain sacrifices to achieve certain goals. And whether that be, you know, having to dance in a club or maybe you got a trap, you got a scam, like you got to do something out of the ordinary. Like I'm not saying like that's right, Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like those are like, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get to where you want to be. That's a fact. It's a bar. There you go. Yeah. It's a bar. Now that's, that's for sure, for sure. Like you, you're not going to make it nowhere without taking some Mm risks. And especially I feel like given like where we came from, it's like, those opportunities that, you know, motherfuckers be talking about on TV or on Instagram that you see pop up, like, that shit don't be around. Like, we don't got no uncle with no firm who gonna yeah. give me an internship. I like, wish I did. Yeah, like, yo, <laughs> niggas gotta go shit. out here and really figure shit out yeah. sometimes. And sometimes you gotta get your hands dirty. It's about fi- fi- figuring out how to get them clean now and come out the other yeah. side and do shit the right way. And I feel like you definitely did that. So I know, like, Miami is, is kind of, like, where you started like making connections musically is like where you really started working and get, getting your way up there yeah i mean actually i think miami i definitely made a lot of connections there um i was locked in with this little group of like artists and stuff like that called room 112 and you know i really i really kind of started to learn my sound and being in the studio there but i think it was when i got to la that i started to meet more like People in the industry, okay. if I might say. So how was your experience in L.A.? Uh, <laughs> it was good and bad. It was good and bad. I think L.A. is one of those places, like, you can't be weak-minded. You can't be easily influenced. Like, a lot of people go there and they think, yeah, oh, my God, I'm going to be a superstar. Like, I'm going to go to Hollywood. Thanks. But that shit, it's, it's a three million people saying the same thing that you are going to L.A. trying to make it work. And mm-hmm. it's a lot of people that are willing to like, I don't know, it's a lot of snakes in the grass out there. You got to be careful. Mm. I don't know. I feel like I wasn't really mentally prepared. And also, like, when I started dancing, L.A. is so expensive that I kind of just got, not caught up in the lifestyle, but it was almost like a hamster on a wheel. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just trying to keep up with paying for my Airbnbs and um, just a bunch of other shit, like, just trying to maintain the lifestyle that I really... Like, I sat back one day and I realized, like, I wasn't even doing what I was supposed to be doing. Like, I wasn't really locked in right. how I wanted to be. So, that's why I kind of just had to remove myself from that space yeah. and come back to the East Coast. It's crazy you say that, though. Uh, my man, Jay. Jay, Art from the Heart. He rap. He do painting. you probably seen him before. He, like, paint naked bodies while he perform and shit like that. I think I, yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, most yeah. people see him. Mm-hmm. Most people seen somebody painting naked bodies and performing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he, he had the same story. Like, he went out L.A., you know, with the dream and all that type shit. And it's like, literally, as soon as he started making the money, now you start getting caught up in that lifestyle. And he, like, he looked up and he was like, yeah, this shit is... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going, like you said, on that, on that wheel, like, this shit is it's not what I came out here for. Yeah. And he had to come back to get shit back on track. But you live and you learn. It's definitely crazy when you hear people say it because it's like, you know, most of us have never took that that shot and went out L.A., but definitely you hear, yeah. like, yeah, L.A. is where you make it happen, where everybody that he love you. <laughs> That's why, <on> <laughs> right? But, um, yeah. I also feel like when you're a spiritual being, like, I consider myself to be very spiritually aware. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I can pick up on certain vibes and certain energies, and I just feel like I'm very sensitive to it. So when you're in a place like L.A. where it's very dark Mm. and, like, 
it's a lot of pain out there. It's a lot of evilness. Mm. It's like, it could really just throw you off. Like, right. it might not be something specific that something did for me, like somebody did to me, but just being in that environment constantly could really just, like, set you back. Like, you're picking up on so many different energies like it could really fuck you up yeah. like sometimes when you really trying to grow and level up you got to remove yourself from everybody and everything mm. and just lock in and i feel like that's what i had to do i don't know was there like any crazy like specific experience in la you could tell us about like any specific situation at all i mean maybe not one specific but i don't know people out there used to be on coke Real yeah. bad, like, and they be doing coke in LA, like how Philly people smoke weed or like pop yeah. apart, like, like it's, it's nothing. Yeah, like it's super regular out there, and I just I ain't never grow up seeing no fucking coke, like. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it wasn't one experience, but I think that was one thing that stood out being in LA, like how. Mm. Everybody was just on that. Yeah, <laughs> and it, so was it was like nothing. that's like that's like the third level. It's like uh, I ain't ready to go up here. Yeah, yeah this, no, that yeah. was that was a lot, and it was just I don't know. Did you meet some good people out there? Like, did you meet anybody who helped excel you where you are now? In the yeah, show? um, this guy Bobby D. He's okay. um, you know, the Lovers and Friends tour. Yeah. Uh, like he goes, it's like a 90s type festival or like R&B type festival. I think I went to it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and I think on. he's Snoop Dogg's manager too now. But he was one person that I made a solid connection with. Okay. Um, we actually met at the club. Like, I was um, dancing. And then he was like, hey, like, um, you know, whatever, whatever. But we ended up just chopping it up. And then outside of there, like, it wasn't even no weird shit. Like, he wanted to invest in me. And shout out to him. Like, he put me in the studio. Uh, put me in with some good people, but mm -hmm. yeah, I just haven't been back. But I know that if I go back to LA, um, it's a couple people like him and some solid girlfriends that I made out there that I could always just, you know, kind of lean on. Hell yeah, type shit. I I I'm due for an LA trip. As much shit as I just talked about it, I'm due for one just to yeah. go out for a couple of days and. You reconnect. definitely got your feet wet early on. I like, did. To have lived in Miami, a stint in LA. Like, you was playing no games. Like, you hit the ground running. Like, you not yeah. playing at all. And you already in the position you in, all eyes on you. That's crazy. Like, I, I must say, like, you really you really a go-getter. Like, you really be chasing your dreams down on some shit. Thank you. But um, how, you, how do you discern, you know, work in this industry from men that's really trying to assist and help and that's on some creep shit? Mm-hmm. I feel like even now, like, it's really difficult for me to tell because yeah. this industry is very much smoke and mirrors. Like, mm. somebody might present themselves to you as a help, helping hand. Right. You know, you know, at first they might not be on, you know, no weird type time, but then later down the line, it could change. You mm. know, I can't sit here and say that I'm not still learning. It's really hard to tell. I feel like just trust your intuition. Mm. But, you know, this industry is male dominated and it's a lot, it's very perverted sometimes. Like, mm. I've definitely met a couple creeps, but. Yeah. Did they hit it's you like ultimatums type shit? Like, ultimatums? I'll get you in this magazine, but, you know. Oh, in LA, yeah, there was this one producer that I worked with. He was a fucking weirdo, bro. Like, he mm. was a weirdo. He, like, kicked it to me. Like, he really liked my sound, and he was yeah. like, let's just lock in in the studio. I've worked with so, 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 and so. And I get there, and the man was being so goddamn weird. Like, he was like, oh, can you give me a massage and all this shit? And I'm like, fuck am I going to give you a massage for? I'm not a masseuse. I'm an artist. I came here to work. Yeah. He's like, yeah, but, like, at the end of the day, like, you, you want to be an artist. Like, there's certain things that you might have to do sometimes. I'm like, bro, like... Wow. You're weird. I just left. So yeah. it, it be shit like that sometimes. Like that, yeah. But you gotta just stay in your ground. Like you can't you can't be easily swayed because that's how it be. And like I was just having this conversation the other day too. Like I could see why some bitches are more up than me now. Mm. Cause it's a lot of things that I wasn't willing to do. Mm -hmm. Like they'll throw you a couple things like, yeah, like you gonna suck my dick for a, a, a beat? You gonna do this for this? For a beat though? Yeah, they'll they'll hit you with shit like that. Hell That's yeah. Crazy. But and some and some females take the beat and they go with it. Yeah, I mean shit. 
I ain't judging nobody, but this shit is slow game when you're trying to do it the right way, for That's sure. That's a fact. When it you're is. not trying to cut no corners, this shit take a little, you know what I mean? Hell yeah. It definitely takes like, a little time. Even the levels that I have beat, like where I am right now, people will still try to say, yeah, she had to fuck 100 guys to get to that point. And it's like, damn, like I really did it. Mm. But that's what people automatically assume because that is what this industry is founded on. Is it that just what the industry founded on? Is it like your yeah, parents? Like you are, you know. You it could pretty. be my parents too, yeah, but. Do you think like they give it to pretty girls harder? I feel like they come for the, the cute girls more than. I feel like there's. They're slower to give me my credit, maybe because I'm pretty or maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know, whatever the case may be, what they might assume about me. But if people would just actually take the time to click a video like this and get to know me and hear what I'm actually saying, it might change their mind. But from face value, I could understand I'm a bad bitch. Like, I am <laughs> fuckable. Like, I could mm -hmm. see why you would say that. But right. it's, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than it's that. It's deeper than that. That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, I think that's why conversations like this definitely be 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 needed to to help people see you deeper than what they see from a two minute clip. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. They get get something a little bit more, and I understand that music. You definitely gonna give it to them one way, where though that might not be how you really are. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Kevin Gates, like for the longest, I wasn't fucking with Kevin Gates. Like I just like always looked at him like this ignorant ass nigga. Like no <laughs> lie. But I fuck with him to the fullest. <laughs> After listening He's to an interview with him, him. <laughs> he do be talking some crazy, some wild shit. But when I first like listened to him on the Breakfast Club interview, he drew, he was just giving some knowledge and he just stood on his morals and his principles. I was like, this is this yeah. a real nigga. Like I I could fuck with him mm -hmm. after that. But it was like before that, all you thought was like you just another nigga doing nigga shit, get mm -hmm. draws hanging out, all types of shit. Like you know what I mean? Now yeah. he tightened up and he speak knowledge, so he just he, he all the way there now. But you definitely drew conclusions early on, but definitely. I just definitely was wondering, like, how, how do you navigate that, like, being in this industry while still building your name? It ain't like you already made yeah, it. Definitely. So it was like, at some point, you got to claim that credit. You got to get that credit in order to move higher. Mm -hmm. Like, they got to accept you as the artist with this talent that you that you have versus, like, oh, she's just a pretty girl fucking with a nigga to get to it. No, like, I'm really, really be working, like, really be doing this shit. Do you feel like it has an effect on you at all? Um, I mean, I ain't going to sit here and say that I'm just like this super hard body. Like, I feel like I have my moments where, not that it gets me, but like, I don't know. I might, it, it could offend me sometimes, like what people say about me, for sure. Right. Because it's like, damn, like I went through so much shit and I've really invested in myself, time and energy. And it's like people will still find room to shit on it. Mm. But at the end of the day, like I just got to remember that a lot of people just project what they're going through. Like it's not even about mm. me or how hard I've worked or what I did. Like a lot of times people will just project their own situation onto me and try to make me feel bad because they feel bad about themselves. Like, their situation is fucked up. I don't know nobody that is happy with their life that goes on Instagram mm -hmm. and comments some negative shit to go ruin somebody's day. So clearly, like, if you got the time in your day to do that, it's some underlying shit that you got Fact. going on. So I don't even hold it against you. <laughs> I just pray for you, like. That's a fact, though. That's yeah. a fact. You, you you gotta be going through some shit to be I've never hate done it. Even when I've been going through some shit, I will never go on a fake page and go bully somebody. Like, I, my mind don't even be wired to do shit like that. That's a fact. I just never did that. I, I don't understand it either. I'll be wondering, like, when people, like, jump out the blue and just say wild shit, it'd be like, yo, what were you doing? Like, yeah. why, what made you even go and do this and say this? Like, why? Like, for the know. longest, I was just deleting shit. Like, I leave it now, but for the longest, I, like, didn't, like, I had no tight tolerance for any negativity. Like, yeah. I, like, the same way you said, like, you feel energies and vibes, I don't even like that shit on my page. Like, I don't even want you giving that to somebody else. Yeah. I might not give a fuck, but the next nigga going to care. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or the person who's in the interview. Like, I'll have a guest on, and somebody will say some wild shit about the guest. 
some shit I know is bullshit and is off the wall. You just saying anything. Yeah. I'm not. I don't want them feeling like I'm allowing you to just say this wild shit. Like you might fuck they day up. Like I'll delete it. That's like, true. But I do understand. Like at this point, kind of like part of the game type shit. Like you know what I mean. Like the negative, in a sense, drives the positive. Yep. Without the hate, the the love isn't appreciated as much. Definitely. You know what I mean. I don't know why it's like that, but that's where we at now in society. But um, you ready to get to this food? Oh, yes. I would love that. Yeah, we want to get this food. I That's eat the best all part. day waiting for this meal. Well, so It be like that, too. I, I, mean. hope, I hope it's slapping. You said that you never had no complaints, so. Yeah, listen, man. We, too, we, leave, we leave the door open. Let me know how you feel. You already <laughs> know. Keep it real. Yeah. Listen, you already know it is. Your boy smooth. We got Miss J. Lonnie in the building. It's cooking up 2 and 5. We be right back. Let's go. You now watch it cooking up 2 and 5. But I don't got to tell you that because you watching it, right? Listen, man, make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. We appreciate all support. And the more you support, the more we can show love to the people and provide opportunities and help you get your career off the ground. Now, if you have a business and want to see your ads, this could be your ad right here. Send them in. Make sure you email us at cookingupbookings at gmail.com or follow us on Instagram and DM us at cookingup215. It's your boy Smooth. Let's go. It's our favorite part of the show. That's your favorite. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, chef, what you got cooking? You already know. You already know who it is. It's your boy Smoothie. It is my favorite part of the show. Time to get into that food. You already know we got Miss Jaylani in the building. Yep. And you know I had to pull the big guns out, man. <laughs> chef Q in the building. What's up, Q? I'm good, yourself. Listen, I'm, I'm happy that you're here. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm, I'm happy she's here too. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm always happy to be here. She be flying in with that cape like Superwoman. You hear me? With that see. food in the hand like this. Quick 30 minute meals, you know. Listen, let them know what you got for me today. All right, y'all. So today, since it's Memorial Day, I took it back. We outside at the cookout today. So yeah. I started with, I started off with the devil eggs, with the saute shrimp, and the sweet Thai chili sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to get that little. Fight mm. today. And then on the main plate, we got the honey barbecue wings, the beef skewers, mac and cheese, and you already know I had to do the potato salad. Mm. Now, everybody, potato salad ain't good, but this right here? Yeah. Yeah, it's touching moms and grandma. I, 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 ain't can't, I can't wait to see what it's him. I, li I like the way that mac got that little, you know what I'm saying? That That's little shine kind. to yeah. it, like, it's a different highlight. kind of crisp on top. That joint looks you know. head team. Look, head you team. already know how. Cook our food taste when everything touch each other. You already know. Listen, man. Shout out my guy Huff. Huff literally just sent me some wings. Me and Huff be going back and forth what meals we be cooking. He just sent me some wings. So it was crazy that you brought these wings. Cause I was like, damn. Yeah. Now I want some wings. And here you go. You be reading Look, my mind. We here. We here with it. We here with it. Telepathy be real. Like <laughs> for real. For real. How you feeling, Lonnie? How you feel? I'm so ready. I didn't eat all day for this. Literally not a slither of food. So I'm just ready yeah, to dig in. Prepared. So you're going right to appreciate there. it all. Let's, yes. Yeah. Scrum the yum yum. Yeah. Go ahead, Q. Tell them where to follow you at, how to get all with you. All right, y'all can find me on Instagram at ChefQ underscore cut through. Listen, man, I'm trying to tell y'all y'all better get with Q. I don't know what y'all yeah, waiting. Y'all tripping. Y'all it's, it's crazy, man. Y'all already know it is. Your boy Smooth, Miss Jaylani, Chef Q. Let's get back to the show. Let's go. You already know who it is. It's your boy Smooth. And we right back at it. Still here with my girl, Miss Jaylani, in the building. Look, man, Chef Q came through once again. This that Oof. time. This is when we picked that fork up. That time you've been waiting on. You hear me? This makes me so happy. I'm so fat. I'm Listen. such a big back. Like, this right here, <laughs> nothing makes me happier than a... What you going for first? Which, the mac and cheese. Yes, like, uh, you have to. Yes, sir. Uh, Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Cheesy goodness. Nice and cheesy, that dang hit. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. That's exactly like how I thought it was going to taste. Yeah. A little better. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, That's how you know the food the good when like nobody talks. It's just yeah, like, no you, words. Like a moment of silence. That yeah. potato salad. You gotta hit that. Tell me, tell me, what, tell me what you think about it. You know that what? I'm salad. really not a big potato salad girl, but I'm gonna try it. So listen, everybody can't make potato salad. But We're gonna this see. thing. Mm-hmm. 
That's a one. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I actually like it. Mm. I know, I hand cut them. Mm hmm. Damn, yeah, I need to got come to chicken. her cookouts. That's it, huh? My family don't be cooking like this, no shade. Mm. That's so good. I don't know. Time for that chicken. I really want to see what's up with this. I know, right? I, I, I wanted to pay my respects to the plate first before I hit the double yeah. egg. Wow. Damn. I'm going to go with the flat because I know you niggas love flats out there. I don't need y'all judging me about the drumstick. Wow. Yeah, he going turkey. Summertime mm. shit, man. Don't judge us. Mm-hmm. I don't know how vegans do it. Mm. This shit too damn good. That's so good. That sauce and the wings. Uh -uh. Damn. Mm -mm -mm. You took the whole stick out already? How you do it? Right. My hand was slipping. I had to just, yeah. you know what I mean? Bite, bite the situation. No diddy, you know what I mean? They be, they be on me. I was trying to say around here. Yeah. The no diddy police on this joint, you mean? Mm. Let me go, man. You know what I'm saying? See what it's hitting for. It's like double diddy. You gonna drive without me? Oh, you, you want the same time situation? We gotta, like, yeah. cheers it and all. Yeah, you you're supposed right. to, like, I'm gonna try this one. one bite the situation, or do you, like, make I it mean, pretty and do I'm gonna just one bite it. Yeah. Oh! Slippery, slippery slope. There we go. Cheers. cheers. Mm. Why you make that sound? <laughs> you about to make me mad. <laughs> a little extra tight chili on that joint. I mean, it's a, it's a little situation. I ain't want to drop it on my shirt, my jeans, or nothing. Mm. Yeah, I think that. <laughs> you just slurped the fuck out that joint. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, a little tight chili was about to. I told you they be on me, so I can't even. And let stuff like that happen. That was great. Mm-hmm. Mm. You don't be playing. All right. So this one I like to play a little game, ask you a couple questions, help the people get to know you a little bit. Okay. So first question. If you had to choose one meal to eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm. For the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. I would probably say, like, Kava. You know Kava? No, you wanted to tell me about that. Kava is like this Mediterranean healthy type food. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I always be eating that shit. But the only reason I would say that is because like, it's good and it's still healthy. Like, mm. I feel like if I ate this every day, like it's so good, but I would probably die fast as hell <laughs> because like, <laughs> this is like, like a dessert. Like this is something you eat like. You know, not mm -hmm. all the time. Like, you That's have to enjoy job. this. Mm -hmm. But to eat every day, like, I still got to survive and be healthy. Like, I would probably want to eat, like, you know, some calm shit. Yeah. You want to be winded in the yeah. studio. Yeah. Hey, bar, you need a break. Yeah, this, this, some, this is a real big back move, but this yeah. don't hit him. Big back, big back. <laughs> <laughs> no, Say, nah, let me know. stop playing. But, all right, second question. Now, I know you, you know, being female, looking as you do, you, you probably get some wild DMs. Oh, my God. This is the craziest DM you ever got. All right. Okay, so it wasn't a DM. I had put, like, I had made a Google voice number and then put it so people can text and call mm -hmm. with inqu inquiries and stuff. But I, I keep it on another phone. Like, I don't even got access to it. I just check it. Like, somebody tells me when. A day ring or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I had gotten on the phone to check it. And um, this guy had, like, left this voice message basically telling me how he would, like, the way he would eat my asshole, pretty much. And the way how he would do it. And, Damn. like, he was breathing real heavy. Like, you could, <laughs> you could tell he was a big back. So, yeah. like, the way he was saying it, I was like, wait. <laughs> 
<laughs> so then I post it. I'm like, yo, whoever the fuck this is, like, this is not what the voice message was for. The yeah. Google shit was for. So whole time, he DMs me. He like, yo, that was me. Like, you got my number there. Like, can you delete it? Mm. And I'm like, well, why did you, like... Why did you even send the message in the first place? Like that's with his was... real number too. Like you, you thought he was gonna get a call back and all yeah, that. Yeah, like I oh, don't wow. know. I didn't take it down though. Mm. <laughs> you didn't take it down. No, I didn't take it down. Yeah, because it's like you being creepy. Like yeah. you talking about how you about to devour my asshole. So like, <laughs> if you got a baby mom, I feel like she deserved to see she this. She deserved to see the yeah. type of shit you want. Yeah, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Facts. So, what's the craziest thing you ever done while drunk? Mm. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. The crazy... <laughs> nah. The craziest thing I've done is probably... I do crazy shit every time I get drunk. That's why I don't need to be getting drunk. But last summer, I was hanging out the window, like, the of the drop top. I got on the top of the car. I was dancing. But that's <laughs> not really all that crazy. So was the crazy? I don't know. Like I, I fought wall, when shit. I was drunk. Like I don't know. Shit, I don't really do nothing too out of pocket. She ain't got no crazy drunk story. Oh, okay. All right. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna not go too into detail. But one time I was arguing with my boyfriend at the time, and I was just blacked out drunk, and I was just arguing with him, mm-hmm. and somebody had somebody had broken to his car. Mm. while like we had a party at my house and somebody had broken into his car so I basically had called the cops crying and screaming that somebody broke into his car and I was just being delusional mm. and I didn't have no shoes on that was crazy too <laughs> like that was trifling but yeah I think that was the craziest one okay now what is a hidden talent that you have that nobody knows about hmm a hidden talent yeah I feel like I'm really good at drawing. Like, Mm. I could draw. Yeah? Yeah, when I was in elementary school, um, they had, like, this competition in second grade that if you drew, like, the best tree, Mm. that you could win the the mayor or the governor. The governor. Mm. So, basically, I drew the best tree out of the whole class. Like, nobody (laughs) was fucking with me. So, I got to meet the governor. I was taking pictures with him. And then... They planted a tree for me Damn, that's at right. my elementary school because I won. Like, you could go back there and to this day. And that tree, tree still there? Yeah, it's the Jaylani tree. The Jaylani tree. Like you can literally tree. see it today. Well, you you lit since elementary yeah. school. That's wild. That's yeah. different. You got a whole tree at your school. On the low, though. <laughs> All right, last one. Your biggest fear? Mm. My biggest fear is, like... Not being successful. I know that's so, like, cliche, like, uh, boo, bitch. But, like, for real, though. Like, I really have nightmares of, like, shit not working out for me the way I want it. Mm. Like, that shit will really haunt me. Like, the way I see myself living, like, I have to live it, or it's, like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just no other option. I feel that to the core. So what, what like, do you have, like, a plan B? Like, no. you, you, you just, Mm-mm. you on it. There's no plan B. Mm. I'm a, I, I, I might do a couple things to make plan A work. Right. But I ain't, no. Ain't this no is pivoting. We, we straight on this. Yeah. That's what's up. As it should be. As it should be. Hell yeah. So, it's 2024. You got, uh, you just dropped Favorite Eater mm-hmm. with Self Made Calf. Mm-hmm. That's what you're pushing right now? I'm sorry. Hold on. Um, what do you think? Oh my God. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So I'm eat too. Please, please. Oh my god! And then this microphone going like just catch all the. <laughs> sure, y'all better turn that down too. They Mix gonna be like this bitch. A- ASMR. You know what I mean, low key. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Kev. He is. He's such a great guy. Um, he basically reached out to me, like, around January or February, and he made a post. He was like, "Everybody tag Jelani under this. Like, I want her to get on a song." So that's basically how I found him. And then from there, I got on a song, went and did the video. And his whole situation is, like, super valid. Like, mm-hmm. they they Dominican, and I'm Dominican, too. So it was just, like, an automatic vibe there. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, they're just super solid. I love the song. I love the track. I feel like 
our voices complemented each other really well. I right. hope that I know he got it though. Like he got his own little sound and he gonna go all the way up. So I just been kind of pushing that for us. But aside from that, um, I've been had a project ready. I've okay. been had a project ready since like February. So at this point, I'm kind of just trying to get all my ducks in order as far as the business goes, mm -hmm. so that I could release and yeah. And that's uh. That's pretty much right. Eleven, eleven. Mm-hmm. Is that like a date? What is that? No, eleven, eleven is just like numbers that have always resonated with me. I feel like okay. There's been times in my life where I felt like I was kind of lost, and then I would just always see those numbers, mm. like during those phases of me just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I just kind of like served as a reminder, like, all right, you're still on the right path. Like shit might not be exactly where you want it, but I would see those numbers constantly. Like I could turn to the left and see it. Like it was like a constant thing. Like I couldn't deny it, you right. know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, damn, that low key kind of probably means something. And yeah. you use it. I, the crazy part, like, I, I look into shit like that, too. Like, I'm, a, like you said, like, a spiritual person, getting the energy, vibes, a whole lot of shit. Like, you know, I dove down that rabbit hole a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So I definitely do believe, like, there's meaning in numbers, especially, like, even personally, like, to yourself sometimes. So when you see certain shit, it do mean shit like that. Like, it yeah. could be a reminder, like, your angel numbers or some shit like that. But um, I definitely was looking into this thing where... You know how they always talk about like Illuminati shit and how they use numbers, like they I with didn't the thirty three shit. Yeah, what is it? 33? So it's like you'll see thirty three, but they got something to do like the thirty three degree Mason and all that type of shit. But they just use numbers. They understand numerology and astrology, and they use okay. that in order to make sure they doing business at the right times to make sure business goes good. So they'll do certain shit on certain dates. Drop shit on certain dates, have shit with certain numbers. And it's like you, they use it for you know what they use it for, but yeah. you can always use it for good too. Like positive shit, right? Yeah. So I'm like, damn, I, I gotta learn this shit so I can start dropping shit at proper times on proper dates. And you know, like just when they say like the stars align for you, yeah, that's what it is. That's interesting, right? So I like how you did that. That might work. It might work well for you. I mm -hmm. hope so. Right. Um, so can we expect any features on this project? Yeah. Okay. You want to tell us what? Um, I'll tell you one. Fabio, me and Fabio definitely got a song coming. Mm. Yeah. I was going to ask you, I seen y'all was in the studio. Was that Swiss Beats? Um, no, I don't think so. No, okay. No. It was a Wait. picture. You was in there with Slow. Slow was in there too. And Swiss was on FaceTime? No, it was he was like the engineer, like it looked like Oh he, no, 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 no. He looks just no, like Swiss. No, Swiss, Swiss Beats was on FaceTime one time though when we was on this too. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. I think he had called Meek or some shit and it was chopping it up. That's all right. I I haven't gotten the chance to, you know, um work well. Yeah, not yet. But mm -hmm. hopefully in the future, you Right, you'll get there. So you and Five, he was in the studio, y'all got some work coming. Yeah. He's dope as fuck too. Really cool guy. We got on some like New York you know that sexy drill type sound? Mm -hmm. We on that type time. So mm. I think y'all gonna like it. No, I think so. Yeah. Favi, Favi dope. Like, he, he he's super dope. Yeah, he's super down to earth, super chill, super smooth. Yeah. He, he a fly, cool guy. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely can see it. He got, he got like, some work. Like, at first, when he first came out, I was like, you know what I mean? But as it progressed and you hear him more. Yeah. And I, I definitely feel like he got comfortable in his own sound, so now it's like you hear it even more. Definitely, yeah. Like even that drink, that record he did with Meek, it was, that was a good joint. It was like a different sound and he was talking some real shit versus just talking like the drill shit or, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And he's a little older too, so like I feel like he's more, like he kind of found his sound. Like I feel like in the beginning maybe he was like exploring with different things, but now I notice like he's more consistent with you know what he's going for i like right. it what, what, what he giving the people yeah right you know that's a good job are you singing on this track like are you doing your thing or are you more so rapping singing yeah yeah so is it yeah. melodic yeah it's gonna be a one it's gonna be one of them ones. <laughs> i'm telling you so that's the only feature you're giving us right now 
Only one because I'm sorry. You go. I've done songs with a couple artists, like, mm-hmm. but you know, I feel like maybe for this project, it's like some songs that y'all hear, it be like created years ago, mm. and then when it drop, you'll think that it's new, but it's really not. Like sometimes you gotta like hold certain tracks for the right moment. Thanks. So I really just want this project to be well calculated. I want it to be authentic to, you know, what, like, the feelings that I'm feeling right now. And then maybe, like, down the line, I might take one of those tracks that I did with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it'd be valid for next year and the next right. two years. What's, so. what's your process like when it comes to picking songs and stuff like that? Well... Lately, I've just been trying to create a project that flows together. Like, since my music is so drastically different, sometimes, like, it'd be hard for me to, like, pick a sound that just kind of flows all the way through. So I think that's where I'm at with it. Like, with the project, I just want it to flow. Like, you could, it could start from the intro and then to the next song and to the next song, but it all kind of has the same, like, feel to it, if mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Like, it might sound different, but, you know, it's just... I get what you're saying. You, I don't know how to explain Energy-wise, it Energy-wise, it Yeah, fits. like, it, it flows just together. fits, yeah. yeah. Got you. That's really important to me. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like feng shui a little bit, but on music. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a crazy thing. Some people don't even understand that that shit matters. Like, you have a track, and then they go to the next track, and it's a whole total different vibe and energy. Yeah. And, you know, the shit just jumpy. But if you really want to create a cohesive body of work. Exactly. You need that flow where motherfuckers start that joint on one. And play it all Yeah, the way like through. you could just play the whole thing through and just yeah. feel like, damn, like I just listen to art type exactly. shit. Exactly. How serious do you feel as though you take your music? I feel like at this point in my life, um, I take it extremely serious. I feel like maybe if you would have asked me the same question two, three years ago, it mm-hmm. would have been different. But where I'm at, I, I feel like since, I don't know, I've been signed... And I really got to experience like the business aspect of it and just everything in general where I'm at is just like, it's now or never and I'm just all in with it. Like I'm mm-hmm. willing to bet my last dollar on myself. And that's something that I wasn't always willing to do. Mm. So yeah, I take it extremely serious and being signed to an independent, independent label, you know, it comes with its, you know, different things sometimes. But one thing I do appreciate is that I've been able to learn the business side of it. Having to do everything by myself has kind of like uh, just given me the opportunity to now, where now, like when I move on to a major label, mm-hmm. I won't, like, I'll know how everything works because I had to be hands on with every aspect of my career. Right. If you understand. It was you understand. a part of the process. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so you know everything that goes into it. Yeah. You know I'm, I, mean? I literally have to. Sign off on everything. Like the team around me, I created. The music, I create. The producers, I pick. Mm. You know, like every single thing that involves the business, I'm the one calling the shots. And it could be frustrating at times, mm. you know, but at the end, I believe that it was good for me to have experienced it the way that I did. Definitely. Fact, fact. It's definitely better to be uh, in it. Then outside of it, and then not know nothing. Like you exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. You could know it, and then not need to be hands on, mm-hmm. versus just not even knowing it when you need to know some shit. Yeah. And they could tell you anything and do you how they want to do you. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, that shit's crazy. So, what do you think was like the 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 biggest pro to your situation? Like, what was the biggest positive out of being in that deal? Um. I think that I was able, like, Meek definitely put a light on me, Mm -hmm. and I'm extremely, I'll always be grateful for that. Um, I feel like I was able to create a little bit of, like, my own fan base. Like, I I got my small fame out of it, Mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know. That Meek cosign goes crazy. Like, just being able to say that you're backed by an artist, that's pretty much legendary, Right. So, you know, I'll always be grateful for that part of it. 
Definitely. Okay. Now you speak the way you speak. It's like a little past tense, is it? Are no. Y'all still in this situation? No, yeah, we still locked All in. Right. Yeah. Just ask because you like. But I think my my goals for my career is just not here. Like right. I'm always I'm gonna grow. Yeah. So you know this. You know, yeah. Dream Chasers is still an independent label. I think eventually, like, I want to move forward with a major label, mm-hmm. whether that be like with them or however it goes. Like, right. You know. And I think that's what they do anyway. Like most independent labels, exactly. They you shop know. you to a major. Mm-hmm. A lot of artists did that. You know what I mean? That's how. Who came up with Future? I forgot. Like Rocco or somebody found Future and then put him on. Really? Yeah. Who's Rocco? See, you don't even know Rocco. Rocco Damn, was dating I'm like uncultured. Monica or some shit. And then okay. he like found future, signed them. That's usually how it goes. Gave him to the label, some shit like that. Yeah. And they like buy him out and all that cool shit. Mm-hmm. But they do what they do. Like they get you ready. They get you prepared for a major. Yeah. And do you feel like you was ready for the situation? Like do you feel like you jumped the gun at all? Or no, I don't it? feel like I jumped the gun at all. I feel like I spent, I'm a very indecisive person. Mm-hmm. And it took a long time for me to make decisions that I needed to make. Mm-hmm. Um. So with this, I feel like it was well overdue. I was like, listen, it's time to really just take a leap of faith. You right. know, it might, the situation might not be glitter and gold and diamonds and pearls just yet, but like you need to take the opportunities that God puts in front of you and mm-hmm. make the best out of it. Right. And um, I feel like I was at a point in time where it was like, it's time to really just get in the field. Facts, facts. So many people be chasing a big ass bag and they be missing opportunity. Like we be having this conversation so often. Like, it, it, cause opportunity could come in so many ways, and it might not be attached to a dollar sign. Yeah. But it's like it's about what you do with it versus you know what I'm about to get out of it right now. No, what yeah. are you gonna do with it? Exactly. Not what it's about to give you. What you gonna do with it? Mm-hmm. So I definitely think it was a smart move. And the on the radar, do you feel like that boosted you up, son? I think I definitely think so. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Gabe. I feel like platforms like that, like on the radar and from the block, it's a great opportunity to showcase um, artists that don't might not necessarily have like a big platform. Mm-hmm. And I'm just really grateful that they gave me that opportunity. And then again, with like Meek just posting it, mm-hmm. took it to a whole nother level. Um, mm-hmm. So it was posted on on the radar, my page, Meek's page, and I think. That like powerhouse, like just kind of was the perfect recipe for it to just go viral, go which viral. it did. Like I was just looking the other day on my page. I think it's at like two, three million views. So damn. Yeah, it was really good. Um, was they going yeah. crazy with the Ice Spice c- comparisons? Oh, yeah, they are. I love Ice Spice. I think she's great, um, <laughs> but I'm not her, and she's not me. Thanks. So like, let's let's put that <laughs> line there. She's the girl, and I'm the girl too. But we are two different girls. So. Right, right. Yeah. You feel like people be trying to pin women against each other? Like, is that a real thing? I, like, where they really try to? Ah, uh, yeah. I think they would love to see me and Ice Spice or any other girl artist be because it's entertaining. Mm. But I'm not into all that. I'm I'm a girl's girl. I'm a love girl. Like. I like, I fuck with whoever fuck with me. I'm not the type of bitch to come up stuck up thinking I'm better than anybody or trying to start problems for the clout. Like, right. I'm I'm on, I don't know, good vibes only. Fact. But then again, like, if a bitch is on that, I'm very much <laughs> on that back. We could get it cracking. But I'm not on that, though. Yeah. yeah. You get a lot of love from the females. Like, I there's a so lot of too. female artists in your comments. Yeah, no, I mean... It's a bunch of it's a bunch of girl artists, and even if they're not in my comments, they're in my DMs. Like, like Bia the other day, she mm-hmm. was working out and posted topic while she was working out. I think that was dope. Callie, she's a dope right. artist, always like showing love. We've exchanged our words. Um, Ken the man just reached out to me. She's another artist. Okay, it's really fire. It's a couple of them. I could sit here all day, but. The girls that get it, get it. Like, right. I don't really have a problem with well, any female. artists right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are there some female artists that you look forward to, like, working with? Um, you know, I would really, I always say this in my interviews, so I, I just kind of want to work with whoever want to work with me. If there's, like, good chemistry there, mm-hmm. then I'm so down. I feel like I love what Yachty's doing with Caribou. 
I love Anicia. I love them. They're like so cute. Their little duo is great. Callie, like all the um, girls that are coming up right now, like mm -hmm. I would love to tap in with all of them at some point. So, okay. yeah. And what about like the up and coming local artists? I mean, yeah, that there's a lot of talent in Philly right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talent in Philly that just deserves so much more. Cake Lizzie, she was on this platform. Mm -hmm. She's doing her thing. I love her down lights. Yeah. Bryda, like Facts. in Delaware too, there's just so much there's so much talent. Hero. Yeah. He's another great one from um Delaware. Ken Book. Like I could go on for days, but You haven't worked with any of these artists yet? Yeah, though? I have. You have? Yeah. Like I know you and Skrilla got some. Like, Me and I and love Skrilla. Skrilla. That's my baby. I love him. He's yeah. doing he's in LA right now too, probably. He's just been, he been all everywhere. over doing his thing. Been anywhere. It's, we supposed to been catch up, but it's like me, him, Kwani, yeah. they be everywhere, so it's hard to mm -hmm. get like a date down. Road running. Facts. Should you was road running too? You, I was. So it took us a I'm while. I'm so ready to get back in that mode yeah. though. Like it's always okay to just settle down and recollect, but I'm ready to be on tour be again. On road. I am. What is it like on road? Being on road is like you kind of go wherever your feet land. Like wherever mm -hmm. the money calling, wherever it is, like you just moving and shaking. Like yeah. I feel like. Things just happen real fast and you just, I don't know. You never know who you're going to run into when you're just on, on road. Yeah. Kinda, you know? Is it dope though? Is it what you expected? Is it what you thought it would be or better? Um, it, got as, it got as good and bad. Like It could be exhausting, but I think it'll be good for me to just yeah. put myself out there. I feel like this summer I'm definitely going to be outside. Right. Not outside, like in the clubs, but, no, but more so like working. outside in the studios, at the BET Awards, like mm -hmm. whatever opportunity presents itself, I'm not really ducking it. Like right. I'm not ducking no smoke. I'm wherever they call me. Facts. Definitely. Did you have a thing? Like, I know I keep interrupting your mac and cheese. Go ahead, get your butt. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I keep fucking you up. No, you but, um, you know how when you're young and you're dreaming, you got this dream, you like, like for me, when I was doing music and shit, like I always wanted to go on like Breakfast Club or some shit like that. Do you have that list of like things, like damn, I can't wait to do this, do that, do that? Um, yeah, I mean, I always wanted to perform at Rolling Loud. Damn. Because I went to Rolling Loud and I felt the vibes being in the general admission. Mm. So I want to be able to say like, damn, like I went from... Being in the crowd to being on that stage, having the crowd, you know, there for me. Mm -hmm. So that's your that's your thing. That's your that's yeah, your rolling thing. loud. Yeah, yeah, just rolling loud. I think. I mean, I'm excited to do everything, but rolling loud is the main one that I've always like. <gasps> yeah. And I think it's the only festival that I really want to to. That you really went to, or that you really want to do? No, that I really want to to where okay. like I could say, damn, like I experienced this, like so right. I know this is what I want. Right. Like right. when Meek um. Did Rolling Loud in Portugal? Mm. Like the energy was just crazy. Like Damn. it was like, oh my god! Like I wanna, I can't wait to hear that for you. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And speaking of performances, like you performed in Delaware your first time, and your your wig, like your ponytail came off. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't my first time performing in Delaware. That was probably my fucking hundredth oh. time. But yeah, that was like what almost. A year or two ago, Damn. that shit was crazy. Yeah, that my homegirl, like no shades, sis, but <laughs> she, she, put she it did down my all hair, the way. <laughs> but she did it out of love. Like she's not even a hairstylist. It's just it wasn't no hairstylist available. Gotcha. So. Yeah, I think I did one swing a little too hard, and next thing you know, I didn't even notice till some lady just handed me my ponytail back. <laughs> She's like, you show? dropped this. I'm like, bitch, like, <laughs> she's like, I think you dropped this. I'm like, you think? Like, I'm like, oh, that's shit. Funny. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. So, what's your, uh, you know, besides the tape, are we getting the tape this year? Are we getting 11 11 this yeah. year? Yeah. Okay. You said November. Um, I would like to drop it in November because 11 11. Facts. That would be fire. But, um, I think I'm gonna just drop some singles mm -hmm. the whole summer, cause people's attention spans don't be all the way there for a project. I think I just wanna keep 
you know, putting out records and building momentum and building my fan base. And then I think by fall, I'll be ready to drop a body of work. And it ain't going to be no, like, 15, 20 songs, 10, 20 songs. I'm going to keep it cute. Right. And But it's going to make a statement. It's a good job. Yeah. Anything else they should be looking out 2024? Um... I think you just got to stay tuned. I mean, just follow me, Jaylani999 on all platforms. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jaylani999 on all <laughs> platforms. Yeah, I care. I don't, I'm not really the type to, you know, announce my moves. You just got to catch me in traffic. So yeah. if you're looking for me, you know where to find me. Yeah, keep your eyes open, man. Yeah. She working. She working for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. I definitely look forward to this tape. I can't, I can't wait to hear, you know, full situation it's crazy you say you had over 200 something songs but you you gotta start man, driving, man. give me a little something something yeah. i know yeah yeah but um i look forward to seeing what you do i already know where you headed you know what i'm saying i look forward to seeing you at the top thank you, thing, you for man. having me i appreciate you coming through i really hope you enjoy the meal and we still gonna eat so don't think that you <laughs> know what i mean you you can eat you good so you already know what it is your boy smooth we got Miss J. Lonnie in the building, cooking up two and five, and we out of here. Let's go. Bye, guys.